Okay, in this video we're going to introduce how you can get secondary animation on your character using something that's really cool called the Flex Modifier. That's right, this is going to give you a way to create automatic jiggly animation. Wow, now, it's like dynamics. That's right. Now, nothing in our scene is going to be quote-unquote jiggly. I mean, our ball kind of squashes and stretches. <laughs> jiggly. Yeah. He kind of squashes and stretches while he's bouncing. Mm -hmm. But, uh... What we're going to do is apply this later on to our curtains, as yeah. you guys know, because you know this is the, sure. the curtain part of the video. Right, right. To create some automatic swaying. Very cool. For now, we're going to introduce you to things to create some kind of cool, fun, jiggly animation using Flex. So yes. Let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, let's do a quick demo. Jiggly. I'm going to make a sphere. <laughs> jiggly, jiggly. And uh, I'm going to go ahead, Alt W, maximize the viewport. And now I'm going to do a real quick animation on our sphere. I'm just going to move them from side to side. So we're going to start at frame zero. Mm hmm. And then we're going to, about frame 10, we'll move him to the other side. Got our key there. Yeah. And then a frame 20, uh, we'll bring him back to zero. So I actually, I'm just going to do a shift, drag, Look and copy that first the, key. Yeah, with the tricks So for let's see how that looks. Wah, wah. Don't, don't. Yeah, very simple. Pretty and, uh, quick little animation zapping from one side of the, uh, of the grid back to the other. Sure. All right, now... So now we get the fun part. We're going to put down our flex modifier. Yeah, and before we actually hit player, go ahead and drop it on. Sure. Let's just say, for example, we wanted this uh, sphere to, you know, kind of look as if it's made as, uh, of some sort of a gelatinous substance. Sure. Something that was kind of wobbly, you know? Yeah. And, and give it some secondary wobble as it does its thing. Right, make it a soft body, if that's you That's right. Now, that's exactly what flex is going to do. Now, flex can be used in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. You can use it to create the effect of something like jello. You can... Uh, create some very basic cloth simulations with it. You cool. can make it uh, create things like uh, like a, maybe an antenna on a walkie-talkie that wobbles as you, wo you wave sure, the thing sure, around. Sure. All sorts of things you can do with Flex. Or apply to the stomach of your character so he's got a little jiggly stomach. You exactly. Know? A little all Santa Claus action going on. Very cool yeah. stuff. And it's all automatic. You don't have to really do anything to right. set up a few circumstances. Yeah. So let's go ahead and demo it. If you were to hit play right now, what happens? Okay. Let's see what happens. Ah, we got a little wobble in there. Yeah, now notice this. The whole object is kind of wobbling as one. Right. Now, there are several reasons for this. They, it kind of has to do with the amount of influence that our flex modifier has by default. Now, here's the thing. This video is going to introduce you to the flex modifier, mm -hmm. meaning that just to keep things relatively simple, we're not going to be going into a lot of the various uh, functions of flex that pertain to heavy dynamics. Right. We're going to keep things very simple and make things very easy to understand. Now, what we've got going on right now is that the entire object is flexing equally. Right. So uh, the vertices are being pulled around dynamically, but they're all kind of being pulled around as a single group. Right. So all you end up seeing is this kind of what looks like wobble of position. Sure. The shape of the object isn't really changing. Right. A really quick and easy way to change that is to adjust the center of influence of our modifier. And as some of you might remember from some of our previous videos, modifiers, well, most modifiers, have centers, mm -hmm. which is the center point of the, uh, the transformation of the modifier itself. That's right. If we expand flex... You know, I'm going to hit uh, wireframe on shader real quick. Cool, that's great. I'll open up flex, go down to the center. It actually has a center, and you'll notice right, right now the center is placed at the object's pivot, which is at the center of our sphere. Right. If we move that down, something very interesting happens. Notice we get some shaded vertices. In fact, switch off wireframe on shaded for just a moment, and you can see these shaded vertices that look very much like soft selection. Yeah, it does look familiar. Now, if we uh, hit play right now... Wow, wow, wow. Ooh. A little bit different. Now, because you guys are catching this at 10 frames a second, you might not be able to notice too much of a difference, but if you're following along at home, you will. What's happening right now is that the bottom of the sphere is starting to deform a little more than the top. Right. All right, now let's talk a little bit about some of the parameters of flex that can adjust what you see as your final result. Well, the first parameter here, the flex parameter, that's kind of like the overall magnitude of this uh, flex modifier, okay. if you will. By turning it up, you're going to get like more flex. By okay. turning it down, you're going to get less flex. So watch, why don't we go ahead and double that, and now we could go back and hit play. Wow. Oh, it's actually stronger now. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Uh, there, yeah, let it play a couple of times. It's sure. It's a little bit uh, jittery on our computer. Frame rates might be making that tricky. But again, if you're following uh, click by click at home, you will notice more of a wobble there. Crank right. it up to something a little more interesting, maybe something like six. Wow. We can turn it back down in a second if we need to. So now it's yeah. really stretching mm -hmm. out. It's really obvious. Yeah, very strong here. But notice it's snapping back very quickly. Mm -hmm. And this kind of leads into a very, very brief uh, discussion of how flex works. Basically, there are these like tiny little invisible springs between all of your vertices. That's right. It's and, a, a uh, web work of these springs that are a lot like rubber bands. Right, yeah. And uh, basically, we can control the, the springiness 
of these springs, if so, you will. If you ever played with like a bungee cord, yeah, you know, that's used to, to tie things down. Mm-hmm. You have some bungee cords that if you pull on them, it's like they triple in length. I mean, right. they, they, they're not all that strong. And then you get some that you can barely move. You can pull as hard as you want, and they're really, really strong. Right. That's what strength is going to change. Yeah. How strong these rubber bands in between all of our vertices are. Exactly. So now, if we actually bring the strength down, let's say zero point five or so, it's really low. Yeah, and we go back and hit play. No, it's really, really springy. Yeah, we get some really huge wobble in this. Yeah, and that's also because our flex is so high. So Mm -hmm. if we actually bring that down to two, you can see we're getting more, you know, more of a of a deforming action going on here because our springs are sort of letting our object uh, pull apart a little bit more, if you will. And you'll notice as you start adjusting these parameters, you start to get different feelings of the weight of this gel substance. Right. Like you, you know, you can start to make it look like it's made of like a a jelloish substance. It's very thick. Mm -hmm. Like, it'd be almost hard to push your finger into, or you can make it look very, very wobbly. Yeah, and we can actually adjust the wobbliness, if you will, with the sway parameter. Now, what this is going to do, this is sort of going to tell Max how quickly we want our springs to stop springing. That's right, and uh, if you look at it and just kind of play with it on your own, it's going to kind of look like it's moving in reverse. Yep. Because the lower you put this, the more sway you get back and forth. Right. In fact, if you put this at zero, your object will actually wobble back and forth indefinitely. Right. It'll sort of keep swaying forever, which is kind of cool. Now, uh, the higher you put this, the less sway you get. So think of this attribute as a dampening effect. Right. It's sort of like pouring molasses over your springs, if you will. That's right. uh, It'll control how much energy is bled off frame Mm -hmm. by frame. Right. So why don't we actually try that? Let's uh, let's zero out our sway parameter. <laughs> okay. Hit rewind, and I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit more. And uh, I'm actually going to bump up our time range real quick. Uh, you know, give it an order of magnitude to a thousand. I'm going to hit rewind and hit play. Wow, 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 wow. And with a sway of zero, meaning yep. we have no damping, nothing that's slowing this animation down, yep. we will just sit here and wobble back and forth pretty much forever. Yeah, it's sort of like a perpetual motion machine, if yeah. you will. and it's just going to keep right yeah. on calculating. Yeah, none of the energy of our springs is being dampened out. That's right. Yeah. Now, uh, real quick, we're not <laughs> again. We're not going over every single attribute in here because sure. some of these get a little bit more complex than I'd mm-hmm. like things to get at this point of the game. But just a real quick overview: we can create simple soft bodies. This is where Max is going to kind of control the amount of influence the object is going to have That's automatically right. without you having to really do anything. We can control weights of the vertices. Now, what, the reason that we're actually getting some wobbling here is that we were able to control the amount of influence that Flex has. It's right. got a, uh, a lot of influence here and less and less influence as it moves out. You can actually customize this here in the weights and painting section. You can punch in weights for specific vertices. You can actually select vertices and give them a, a specific weight, mm-hmm. which uh, just a real quick thing on that without getting into it very heavily. You can switch over to your weights and springs area underneath Flex. You can select specific vertices. Notice how they kind of get a little white box around them. Right. And you can actually punch in your own weight value, so you can customize this. Okay. Now, uh, down from here, uh, you can also paint. And we'll talk more about painting weights and painting attributes a little bit later on in this class. Right now, we don't really need it. Uh, we have forces and deflectors. I'm not even really going to talk about this much because that's actually coming soon in, a f- in another video mm-hmm. uh, here in just a moment. Uh, we have advanced parameters, and since they were advanced, we're not really going to be getting into them right yeah. now. It's just a way to control uh, what frame we're listening to for the start, what frame we're listening to for the end of the simulation. Right now, this is off because we don't need it, and whether or not you want to affect all points on your model. Sure. We have the ability to use advanced springs, which actually just have a few more attributes. Right. Uh, it's sort of like advanced control over our specific springs, if you will. That's right. Now, uh, the thing about using any anytime you see enable advanced anything in Max, that means mm-hmm. you're using heavier calculations calculations in right. most cases. So uh, we're going to kind of avoid this for now. We're going to stick with just simple springiness, mm-hmm. which is more than what we need. And we can switch back over just to the top of our flex. We don't really need our center or anything else. You can already see our influence gradating off. Right. So that's a brief overview of all of the parameters within flex without really getting too specific on any one thing. Sure. Now that we've covered that, though, now that you've kind of seen what Flex can do, let's start upping the stakes a little bit. Yeah, let's push it a little bit further. What if we only want to apply the Flex to a certain part of our object? Actually, an interesting point. If I hit G and kind of hide away the grid, Mm -hmm. take a really close look at this object. (laughs) You'll notice that Flex is working across the surface in a linear fashion. Right. There's actually like a straight line of of effect here. We have 100%, Mm -hmm. and we count down perfectly in in sync in a constant amount. Sure, sure, sure. Way down to the end. So our flex gives us this funny looking straight line. Yeah. 
What if we didn't want that to happen? What if right. we wanted a smoother or softer uh, flexibility? Uh, and at the same time, maybe there's part of the object we don't necessarily want to flex. Maybe right. we just want to flex the top of the sphere right. and leave the bottom alone. Mm-hmm. We can start adding on some of the things we've talked about in the, the last video with soft selection. Yeah. Add a, stack this on top of, or technically underneath, mm -hmm. flex, and get some really cool effects. Yeah. Let's go ahead and demonstrate. Cool. Why don't we do that? First thing I'm going to do is rewind the timeline. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just delete out our flex modifier for now, because uh, and go on wireframe unshaded, because basically what I really want to do is, while keeping the sphere, I just want to be able to you know select uh, only the first you know top half and apply flex to that. That's right. Now, naturally, as mentioned in the last video, you don't necessarily have to delete out your flex modifier to do this. Mm -hmm. You can insert a, uh, a poly select underneath it in the stack and use oh, yeah, selection, absolutely. all this kind of stuff. But just to alleviate confusion and to present a nice, clean, consistent workflow, for now, we're, we have gone ahead and deleted out flex, and then we'll stack up our modifiers one by one. Right, exactly. So now I'm going to go back to our trusty poly select modifier that we all know and love, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go down to vertex sub-object mode. I'm just going to select the top vertex of our sphere. Cool. So just a single vertex. Yep. And now I'm going to go down to soft selection, turn that on, and mm -hmm. I'm going to adjust the fall off so it's affecting, uh, you know, around only the first, uh, the top hemisphere of our globe. Okay. And you can see maybe a, a, little a little bit more, bit. yeah. Because it's those areas that are kind of that faded purple, that kind of lavender color, right. That are getting no influence at all, right. And then the the dark blue um, color is getting very, very little influence. Yeah, I might actually pull it back just a little bit further. Sure thing. We can show them how to increase it here in just a few minutes. Yeah, that sounds good. So there you go. Now we have our, our vertices selected, kind of in a gradient-like fashion. Make so no I was going to say, make sure, so you don't get confused, that you don't deselect this. Right. Don't click off in the viewport. Make sure you hold that selection mm -hmm. as you do this next task. Right, because, you know, if you do that, of course, you can just go back and, and reselect again, as, That's right. if you but will. If you lose that selection before you put on the flex, flex will not work right until right. you go back in and recreate that selection. Exactly. I'm going to go ahead, apply flex. Right. And I'll punch in a few values here. I like, you know, a little bit more magnitude. Um, I like to have the springs to be not quite so oh, springy. Hey, hey, before you do that, go sure. ahead and just set, set that back to one. Leave it at the default values, and let's just hit play and just see what we get. Okay. So we'll, we'll kind of build things up. We'll zoom out a little bit. We'll hit play, and voila. You get just a little bit of wobble just yeah. there on top, which right. is very cool. Mm -hmm. So now let's play with our flex parameters so that we end up with a, a little more satisfying flex. Okay. Let's... Bump up our flex's intensity. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make the springs, um, you know, a little bit less stiff. You know, that bleed down the strength of the springs, if you will, about maybe 0.6. And then I'm going to make them uh, sway a little bit more, so maybe about a uh, sway of 4 instead of 7. Okay. See how that looks. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Very cool. So there you go. Now we're only affecting the top half of our object, and right. we have this smooth transition through soft selection. I'm going to go ahead and set influence. my timeline back to 100. We don't okay. need quite all that craziness because we're right. not doing perpetual motion anymore. So there you go. Yeah. Very, very cool. Now, let's say you wanted to, you know, you look at this and you're like, you know, that's pretty cool, but I actually wanted to affect a little more of our object. Okay. What do you got to do? Well, let's go down to our poly select mode again. And uh, go down to a vertex mode, and uh, oop, there you go. And now I'm going to just go ahead and increase the fall off a little bit more. That's right. Just push that fall off a little bit further. A little because, further. Because that selection is being sent up to the flex modifier. Right. The fall off is ending at about 67 units down from your top vertex that you selected, in max units, of course. Cool. Go back up to flex, mm -hmm. and uh, this time, uh, yeah, let's just rewind and hit play. See what happens. Yep. So, so you're getting more, more fall off. That's right. More of the object is actually right. flexing. The bottom of it is still remaining constant. Very, very yep. cool. The bottom is not moving at all. So it's sort of like uh, we're getting jello, if you will. This is a great way to add secondary animation to all kinds of animations. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, you have a, a character, I think in, even in the help file, they have a little ant guy with antenna. Right. And they show you, know, you could make his antenna wobble as he right. turns his and head it's around. Like, you know, of course you could, you know, keyframe animate those antenna, but that would take a long time. And exactly. this just saves you so much work. Just makes it all automatic. I mean, yeah. you could have, like, spines coming off a character, kind of like Sonic the Hedgehog or something. Cool. And as he turns around, all of his spines have a little gentle wobble awesome. to them. All sorts yeah. of great stuff you can do with the flex modifier. So play with this and have a little bit of fun. 
I do think, however, that's everything that we wanted to cover in this particular Boing. video. Now, in the next video, we're going to take things and uh, push them a little bit further and start showing how you can use flex along with some dynamic forces in your scene. Awesome. Ways that you can uh, apply things kind of like maybe some wind, mm -hmm. uh, maybe th something kind of like gravity. How sure. you can block flexes. Like, you notice, how, like right now, the top of our sphere really waves back and forth. Right. What if that swaying object hit an obstacle? Yeah, and what it kind it, of like smacked into it. Yeah, what if it smacked into something? What yeah. would you do? There's ways that you can actually set this up, and that's what we're going to be exploring in the next video. So with that, thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone.